Hello everyone, today I want to do something a little bit different. Now, as you know, I do collect rare vintage machines that would be both audio and videotape machines. But I really love those video machines. I mean, they're, so, they're very special to me because uh, I used to re help my father repair those back in the 80s and the 90s. Now, these machines, they are becoming quite difficult to find in the here and now, 2021 because pretty much every year that passes, they become harder and harder to find. They become even more rare. Um, now this particular machine, I didn't actually have to go ahead and look for it. I actually received an email, a wonderful email from someone in the, um, from the East Coast, the United States. And they let me know if I was interested in buying one of these machines. So of course I said, of course, yes, I would love to buy a machine like that. Now, um, actually had it shipped via the USPS service and uh, they were not able to complete the shipment because they, they left a note on my door that says it's way too heavy. So yes, these machines that are quite big, they're quite bulky, they're quite heavy. As you can see right here, it says heavy exclamation point. Yes, they are quite heavy. So today I do plan to go, go and um, pick up this machine. It's a very special machine for me. Now, actually, I, I already have one of these machines, but I, I mean, I really love fixing these machines. I mean, it's a very rare opportunity to be able to fix another one. Now, I'm, I'm actually thinking about making a very detailed video. Now, I have made videos about this machine, uh, explaining how I was able to repair it, how it works. I've even shown the video output. But on this particular machine that I purchased, now this machine I actually, I gave the seller a very good price. Uh, the, press, the seller told me, how much are you willing to pay? Now I, I, I told that seller, I'm willing to pay $1,500 because this machine actually comes complete with its timer as well as, I believe it's uh, about, um, 16 videotapes. Now, I had never seen so many videotapes for this format. So I do plan to go ahead and uh, pick up this machine. Uh, as you can see right here, I have my my hand truck. I actually had to buy this from Amazon. Um, it was not too expensive. It's from the Magliner company. It's, it's, it's aluminum. It's lightweight. It's very strong. It's very well built. Um, this was not too expensive. This was about $150 or so before shipping. As you can see, it has those huge 10 inch wheels. Now those are air, air filled, which are wonderful. Uh, they perform much better than the, the solid wheels. And I believe this bottom plate is magnesium. Well, that's probably because of the brand Mag, Magnesium, Mag Liner. So yes, I will be using this to pick up my machine. And uh, hopefully, that goes well. All right, so let's go pick up this very big, very bulky machine from the post office. Right. Let's go. All right, so I just stopped at my neighborhood post office, and this is the box in which my Sanyo V Core 2 machine has arrived. And uh, I did have to go pick up this up because uh, they let me know that it was way too heavy, it was way too bulky, but not really. I mean, not not for me. I mean, I believe this machine is about uh, 35 pounds, and that is not including the. Uh, there's actually the timers in here as well as a whole lot of videotapes now i have never seen so many videotapes in my life actually I've, I've only been collecting this format for about four years now so that's not too long compared to this machine four years is like a blink of an eye so my uh, my hand truck right there that's the mag liner uh it did pretty well it's a very smooth ride it's nice air tires um very comfortable handle right there uh, i just bought this about two days ago it arrived via Amazon and this very huge box uh, the seller they did have to go ahead and pay $151.35 for the shipping because it's so big and bulky so yes it's gonna be about a seven block uh, walk to my home I did come walking I, I love 
I love I love walking. Uh, I love listening to music while I walk, and uh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. I, I really want to show you this machine in a lot of detail. Um, I already have plans on what to do to repair it, but uh, I really want to show you every single step that I'm, I'm gonna do to restore this machine in a lot of detail. So I I did buy these uh, ratcheting straps, which I will be using right now to kind of secure this. It's gonna be uh, like about 45 minute walk about seven blocks away thank you all right so i have it nice and strapped down with my ratcheting straps like so uh it's kind of overkill but it is a seven block walk about 45 minutes away i really love the fact that i bought the version that has the the air filled tires because that really helps kind of absorb some of the vibrations and shock all right, so I just got back home. So here is my machine, which is still strapped onto my dolly here. Um, it performed pretty well. I mean, the fact that I had to travel about seven blocks away, that was about a 45 minute walk. Uh, yeah, it is kind of overkill, all of these straps, but it was nice and snug. It, very comfortable, very big round handles here very ergonomic and uh, i do plan to open this box and show you exactly what's inside now i do own another that would be the sanyo v core 2 format machines which i was able to repair now i do have faith that i will be able to make this one work as well i mean this is a hobby of mine i don't do this for the money i do this as a way to remember my my late father we used to repair some very old machines back in the 80s and the 90s he passed away in 1997 so i love doing this as a hobby and kind of uh, continuing his legacy all right so i went ahead and i removed the the ratcheting straps right here so now the box is free from my dolly here, let me go ahead and place this on the floor. Yes, this is quite heavy and quite bulky. Um, so this is my new brand. I just received this about two days ago. That is my dolly. That's from the Magliner brand. I'm gonna place a very good review on that dolly. It performed very, very well, and it didn't cost too much. It was about $150. I mean, for that price, it's a wonderful wonderful little dolly that I, I probably will use in the future because I do plan to collect these machines and they are quite big and they're quite bulky. Sometimes the carriers, they tell me it's, it's too big, it's too bulky. We can't deliver it. We have to come for it. So I have to, I have to go ahead and use that dolly. All right, so let me go ahead and kind of focus this camera here. Now what I did right next to this one is I placed my, my other machine. I oh, mean my other Sanyo V Core 2 machine. That's the model VTC 8200. Now I have made quite a few videos on that machine right there, um, but I do plan to make yet another one. I mean this format, it's quite rare. I mean I do collect the Quasar VR1000 machine, but that machine, it, there's a whole lot more of those machines compared to these. These are quite rare. And I know there are other collectors on e YouTube and uh, a lot of the comments, they tell, they, 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 um, they say, please show us the V chords. And you know what? I mean, at least to me, I don't really feel like that person shows the V chord machines. I want to show you the V chord machines. I mean, I'd be damned if I'm not going to show them to you because this is quite fun. And I also, I want to inspire other people. If, if you're thinking about collecting such a format, please do go ahead and I hope my videos help you. All right, so let me go ahead and open this machine. I'm quite excited because uh, I have seen images of this machine that were sent to me via email by the seller, but there's nothing like actually seeing the machine itself, find out um, sort of what it's gonna take to restore it, to polish it, to, get, to bring that shine back, to clean it both outside and interior wise. Uh, these machines, I, they, you always find all kinds of dust in there and uh, you have to clean the heads, you have to clean the belts. Now the belts, uh, you sometimes have to wash them with soap and water to remove the, those loose particles which create slipping. So let me go ahead and open up this box. I have my box knife right here. Oh yes, very exciting. Uh, 
I love collecting these very old machines. Now this is quite rare, like I said, but it, th there are other machines that are more rare than this, for sure. I mean, for example, the the contribution machines. I mean, you can't compare. Contribution is one of the most rarest forms to find. Uh, and now I do plan to own a cartridge machine someday. And I also plan to own the open Rio machine. Um, but I don't really feel ready for that yet because I know for the open Rio machines, you have to pretty much make your own parts because they're so insanely hard to source. All right, so right away I can kind of see that we do have in fact, oh yes, now the shipper, I mean, he used wonderful uh, shipping products. It's a very nice sturdy box. Uh, they use these, uh, so they're probably uh, reused, which is fine. I mean, these are sort of uh, probably from the uh, Amazon uh, delivery service. They place these sort of uh, airspeed, they call them. There's these airbags, All right? This is the size, and it says right here, let's see, manuals in this cardboard. Wonderful, they even protected the manuals. Now, I do have the manuals for these machines, and I do plan to show you these in a lot of detail. I just kind of want to make a very short video to kind of show you these, show you the fact that, like I said, these are quite rare, but they're not impossible to find. You have to be very diligent. You have to uh, search via many sources, via, um, that would be estate sales, yard sales, garage sales, via eBay, via the Japanese Yahoo auction stores, even flea markets. I mean, if you really look for these machines, you'll find them. It'll take you a while. I mean, about four years ago, I did not have any vintage machines at all, not even cassette audio machines. I kind of started collecting these and it's been a wonderful experience. So what we have here is the uh, warranty registration card. We have the uh, the manual for the timer. Now I did purchase a timer. I probably won't use it. I mean, I might actually sell that timer because I don't really need it. Now, believe it or not, I do record onto these very old machines in the here and now. I think it's a very fun hobby. Uh, look at this. This is a, another box. Oh yes, now these are quite rare. Now, I did give another collector that would be Chris. Uh, Chris, if you're watching this video, um, you inspire me. I mean, you you proved to me that you wanted my other V-Core 2 machine. That would be the 8400 model. You proved to me that you were a very good owner for that machine. And I, I don't regret giving you that machine at all. So I have yet more tapes. Now I did promise to give you more tapes because I, I love the fact that you also record onto these very old, I mean, wow, look at this. Like this is very beautiful. Uh, now I have shown these tapes in the past. Um, look at this, this has a, uh, a queen recording. That would be the band queen, the, the rock band queen. I mean, this, I'm gonna have a lot of fun transferring these onto a digital source digital format that'll probably be the uh all right so what do you have too we have gone with the wind part two actually i have quite a few recordings of this video this video is quite popular i mean if you look at this film via streaming services that would be like netflix like amazon prime video you'll notice that these are quite uh, censored. They have removed many parts because they're quite controversial. But I love knowing that these are complete. These have those censored out parts uh, and they also have the commercials. Now the, the 70s commercials, they're wonderful commercials. And I do plan to upload those commercials pretty soon. I mean, I'm actually in the process of showing my micro cassette collection machines. That will be the stereo micro cassette format. Um, I do want to finish showing those machines before I showed vintage commercials. Now, I have hundreds of vintage commercials. They range between um, Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials, uh, um, auto dealer commercials that show prices. That will be like uh, brand new homes that show you the prices that the homes used to cost back in the 70s. So these are the, the V120s that will be two hours maximum. Now this format does allow you to record in two, that would be recording speeds. One, the, uh, one allows you a, a one hour recording or 
two hours. Now I do plan to record in the two hour mode because these are quite hard to find. All right, now let's see what we have here. Now this one does not say anything, but most likely it is used because, uh, yes, this does not say anything, but it, it probably is used because I, I noticed that uh, it's not spooled all the way. It's, it's so it probably has been recorded on too. All right, so I have another one here. This one has, well, it is what the label states. Now, sometimes these state something on the label when in fact they have something else because this was, these were probably reused quite a few times. This one has Gone with the Wind, part one. Wonderful. Let's see what else we have in here. Oh, yes. Now, this is the time. Let's go ahead and open this box. I'm going to have to go ahead and use my box knife here. Uh, I'm not going to show you these in a lot of detail. I do plan to do that in another video. I just kind of want to let you know uh, this wonderful project that kind of, this was not planned at all. One morning I just kind of woke up and I noticed an email uh, from somebody who happens to live in the East Coast. The East Coast uh, United States. Now I live in the West Coast. I live in San Jose, California wonderful California so this is the timer this is the Sanyo VTG8 uh, this would allow you to um, record either 30 minutes 60 minutes 90 or 120 minutes this would actually turn off the power to the entire VCR so you, you will pretty much press the record button and leave your machine on but you would place this in between. This would be like an in-between machine. As you can see right there, we have another power cord. What you do is you, rec you plug in this machine to your wall socket, like so, and then you plug in your VCR here. So after this turns on, after uh, you preset the times, it actually turns on your VCR. And since the machine itself, it has physical buttons, those would be buttons that you press down, sort of like a boombox style buttons. This would allow you to record your shows even if you weren't home. This must have been something very innovative back in 1976. Now, I don't plan to use this. Um, I might actually, uh, I am gonna restore this for sure. As you can see right here, this is the front display. It is quite scratch. I love removing those scratch with car quality polish. Um, I, I, lo I love cleaning these both inside and out and uh, making them look quite nice before I sell these. Now I do plan to sell this one. Because I don't actually need it, I probably won't use it. I would feel much better knowing that somebody else probably can use it. All right, so we have yet another box right here. Oh yes, we have quite a few tapes here. I mean, I've never seen so many tapes in my life. Um, like I told you, I have not been collecting this format for too long, for about four years only. Um, let's see what's in here. Now this is a reuse box. Uh, it used to be, a, I believe, a bracket for your new plasma displays. Now this machine was made way before plasma displays were around. Okay, now we have yet even more tapes. I mean, this is wonderful. Now I gotta tell you, I paid $1,500 for this package. That would be the VCR itself, as long, along with the timer, and along with all of these videotapes. Now to tell you the truth, I mean, at least to me, the videotapes themselves are well worth the $1,500. I mean, these are insanely hard to find. I mean, you pop this, you're more likely to find a Cartier Vision tape. I mean, at least the tapes, the media, than a V-Core 2 format tape. This format did not last too long. It was quite flawed. It was actually replaced by the the beta machines. I mean, if you notice, it says V-Cord. What Sanyo did a year later is they actually released machines that said beta cord, and it was not very difficult to do. They actually reused some of the parts in those exact same machines. What they did, what they, ins they installed a beta mechanism inside the frames. So they actually abandoned this format. This format was not sold for too long. 
Okay, so we have another videotape here. It says 10. The movie 10. Now, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've like I told you, I've seen images of, of this package before I received it. Now, this package took about a week to arrive. Um, USPS uh, shipping service was used, which is not the fastest. Um, it's, it's, I mean, you get what you pay for. For example, I had to physically go to the post office to pick up this package because for some reason, the delivery person stated that it was way too heavy. All right, I guess. Well, I, obviously, I mean, you can't compare USPS to UPS as well as FedEx. I mean, they have, they have, ha I mean, uh, forklifts, they have dollies. I mean, they were designed to carry big patch packages. I mean, USPS, they were pretty much designed to carry letters. So this is the movie 10, which is a wonderful video with a very, very famous actress, very beautiful actress. All right, let's see, let's watch another one. This says uh, Silver Streak. This is a 1977 film, which makes sense. Like I said, this format was released in 1976. Well, at least in the United States. Now, if you live in Japan, for example, you did have the privilege of using such a format as far back as 1975. All right, so that's another videotape. I mean, I love knowing that I have these many tapes. Uh, I do plan to record onto these after I've transferred these wonderful over-the-air recordings onto a digital format. This is A Star is Born. Wonderful. These videotapes right here. All right, let's see what else we have here. We have, oh yes, now this film is quite famous. Now this is Jaws, that would be the original. They did make quite a few parts to this film, but I believe Jaws, it, 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 it made a lot of money because it was very innovative. Um, actually, this film really accelerated the home video sales. A lot of people that really wanted to own this film in the beta format, for example, in the VHS format. Now, actually, um, pre-recorded films were never released on this format. They was actually designed for you to be able to record in the privacy of your own home. You, um, for example, you never actually saw these with uh, factory-made labels with uh, pre-recorded films on these. All right, let's see what else we have here. We have war of the world okay yeah yeah wonderful film now, actually this film was actually remade uh not a long time ago um i believe uh somewhere around i remember the date it was probably around 2006 somewhere in there so this is war of the world Th this must be the black and white the original film all right we have uh this other one right here now this is young frankenstein wonderful films I mean especially since I happen to love the science fiction and the horror films All right. uh, let's see what we have here now this has quite a few recordings this has it this probably has a, a fraction of that Jaws film because it was quite a long film um, now I I don't know what uh, recording speed speed this was recorded in this might have been recorded on the faster speed. That means that it would not have fit in one tape. It would have taken about one and a half tapes, which makes sense. They probably recorded an entire tape and they used another half of this one. So this would have the other half of the Jaws film. Um, we also have, uh, it states, Football Follies. I mean, football, I mean, football has changed a lot since the 70s. I mean, if you see a modern day football game, you'll notice that they're very, very commercialized. You see a whole lot of commercials, a whole lot of labels for products all over the place. Back in the 70s, it wasn't like that. They really focus on the game itself. Now, I happen to have recordings uh, home recordings that would be of the the rodeo I have rodeo recordings and I do plan to show you those uh, in the near future um, 
it's very interesting. I mean, I wasn't around in the 70s. I was born in 1982. And I've seen those recordings. And I, I kind of don't believe them. Because how can a sport not have advertisements at all? It was, it was, it was different. Nowadays, everything's advertised. Everything carries uh, product advertisements all over the place. Okay, so this has um, Paint Your Wagon. Part two, as well as well as a star is born. Part two, they probably use this as a continuation to other, another recording. All right. So uh, as you can see right here, I have quite a few tapes there, but I, there's even more in here. There's a lot more in here. I mean, I mean, at least to me, this was a very good purchase for me. I mean. Especially since I happen to love these very old, very rare machines. Now look at this. This is yet another box with even more tapes. I mean, this is a whole lot of tapes. All right. We have uh, two more tapes in here. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Now this is Paint Your Wagon Part 1. All right. Now this one right here is time after time these are obviously all 1970s films and these are probably recorded off the air so they probably do have commercials which are wonderful i love those commercials okay we have yet another box here that also states tapes yes these are a whole lot of tapes which is wonderful to see all right now this one has mash Actually, MASH was incredibly popular back in the 70s because it actually, it was a very fun way to show the day-to-day -day life of people that are in the military. And they actually kind of placed their own comedic sort of like spin to it. It's a very funny show, but you also get to learn a lot of information about what what goes on in the military which is wonderful i mean i happen to live in the home of the brave because of the uh home of the free because of the brave absolutely all right so this has mash all right let's see what else we have here we have yet another tape okay now this is wonderful this is very wonderful this is the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it's kind of misspelled. They actually placed two Z's for some reason. I mean, the Wizard of Oz, I mean, it's an incredibly old film, but it was very innovative because it, it, the cameras that were used for this film, they were ve they really, they went against the, uh, they went against the tide. They used several cameras and each camera actually recorded a different color spectrum. Actually, this film, the, the colors on it, they're quite uh, exaggerated, which is it's wonderful. I mean, the, I'm, I happen to love uh, uh, collecting, that would be the color videotape formats. I don't really like the black and white ones because I never really actually use them. So it's going to be very fun to transfer this film. That would be The Wizard of Oz, wonderful film. tapes here but I have this even more we have more tapes here now this one does not have any label at all but for sure it probably is used I mean these tapes uh, yes uh, no label at all uh, but it is, it is used as you can probably see right there it's about three quarters of the way uh, through so for sure there there is something in here I do plan to transfer these to a digital format before I record onto these. This is yet another one. Now this has a very small little label here that says, uh, I believe that might be Camelot. This might be sort of like a um, European uh, Viking sort of a film. I'm not very sure. So it does state Camelot. Uh, they never placed anything right here, but they did place a very small handwritten word, uh, Camelot. All right. So those are my tapes right there. There are quite a few. I mean, I can't imagine how difficult it would have been to find these many tapes. 
as I have here. These are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now that's 18 videotapes, which is quite a few. I actually happen to have another two here, which I purchased, uh, it's been a while now. It's probably been a year and a half ago. So I have two more right there. So technically I have a total of 20 videotapes right there. Uh, yeah, that's a Panasonic digital VHS seal tape right there. I've made quite a few videos on my, that would be the password protected machines where, believe it or not, that, that format, digital VHS, it was in fact able to be password protected. I have quite a few videos on that concept. All right, let me kind of make this stack a little bit smaller to avoid uh, unfortunate collapse right there. I can probably play Jenga with those tapes since I have so many. Okay, now this is the machine itself. Now this is the gold here because these machines there are quite hard to find, like I stated in the here now. A little bit more uh, protective material here. Okay. So this actually came with the original, that would be the dust cover. Yes, the dust cover. Now this is quite yellowed. This is quite old. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, kind of clean this a bit. Yeah, pretty uh, dusty. Um, actually, when, when I received images, look at this, I didn't know this. It seems like the back is actually shorter than the front. When I actually received images of this particular package, I noticed that it was in a garage, someone's garage. Uh, so yeah, garages are not the cleanest place to keep these things. I mean, the doors on garages, they're opened and closed quite often. And also garages, they do tend to get quite cold as well as quite hot because many of the times garages, they're not very well insulated compared to the rest of your home. So then it might be that this machine, I mean, I mean, for sure, I'm pretty sure that the capstan belt is gone because I have repaired another two of these machines and I've noticed that the capstan belt, it never survives. It always falls apart. Now for the playback slash rewind slash fast forward belt, I have repaired another two machines. This, this, would, this would actually be my third machine that I plan to repair. And I do have high hopes that I will be able to get this up and running. Now, actually, I don't really need to uh, record two machines. Um, I might actually sell one. I mean, I don't really need to, but I, I really love restoring these myself. Um, yeah, I just kind of noticed that it's kind of broken. On the side cover is kind of broken, which, I mean, it, it happens. These machines are quite old. Um, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and epoxy together that side panel i mean it's but it's not impossible all right so let's look, let's look at the machine itself let me kind of get it out of this box which is going to be quite a kind of a struggle i mean these are quite heavy all right let me try to do this without uh getting hurt <laughs> oh wow very heavy okay let me kind of get rid of that box as you can see right there, we have a piece of that plastic. I mean, this might have been uh, broken during transportation. Right. Let's place this on the side for now. I kind of want to make an in initial that would be like a uh, initial inspection. Find out what's going to what I'm gonna have to do to get this guy up and running again. All right, let me kind of place it next to my other machine to kind of find out. Because uh, I've actually restored this other one. I did polish it. I did clean it. I did change the belts. And I did, did re-oil the cap stance and all the bearings. I did maintain these switches. Now look at this. Now this is quite a sight here. Now you don't really get to see such a rare format like these, like this, 
especially not to uh, machines. Now, now, I could have had a total of three machines, but I really feel like Chris is the best owner for that other machine. Um, actually, the machine that I gave him, the 8400 model, it, per it performs quite better than these older ones. Um, see, I'm still not really sure what machine that other 8400 model machine was released in because there's not that much information. I did find out that it was actually a business class machine because it, it was actually more portable. It was, it was smaller, it was lighter, it had a handle. Now these machines, they do not have a handle. Okay, so right away, let me kind of zoom in here. I'm going to have to uh, get rid of my tripod here so I can really zoom in. Let me try to um, turn my lights up a little bit so you can really see this very well. Okay, that helps. Okay, so this is a machine that I just purchased. And yes, it is damaged right there. That would be the side cover. Seems like it's broken. It is plastic. This is in fact plastic. Uh, this is just that uh, that protected foam right there. So uh, at least we have the buttons. There's no buttons missing. Uh, the okay. I noticed something right here. Now this is the power button. It seems like the power button is kind of stuck. Is stuck on the on position. I'm gonna have to fix that. Uh, let me kind of compare it to this other one, which happens to work. Yes, when you press it in, it stays inward. That would be on. When you press it again, it pops up. It turns off. So this button works fine. This one does not. I'm going to have to repair that. This this might have have been dropped or something. I don't. I'm not sure. We do have the track in here. It feels okay. It doesn't feel too loose. Okay, okay, this is good. We have a counter here, but notice it's not completely zeroed out. It says 28. That means that this must might have been ran, which is very good to know. That means that the motor probably works. Uh, this other machine, I have used this quite a bit. It's, uh, it says 166. Or so let me kind of reset that okay now the front that will be the channel dials they are in fact here they're actually a little bit more scratch compared to my other machine but at least they're here very nice very nostalgic sound right there this button works fine all right let me try to eject this okay that seems fine Okay, it's kind of hard to see in here. I'm, I, I'm, I don't plan to open. I mean, I will open this eventually and show you what's going on inside. But for now, it seems like I'm going to have to fix this button. That would be the power button. Let me go ahead and look at the uh, the broken side panel. That I mean, unfortunately, it's broken. All right. Yes, this is. Uh, wow, this is. Uh, quite a lot of damage here I'm gonna have to epoxy that that is plastic right there uh, as well as the back right here is sort of broken as well uh, it's actually bent inward it, this might have been dropped during transportation uh, as I can see the power cord is still okay I mean it's not missing any of the three prongs and the cord is not damaged it's still here they actually placed a non-removable cord on this older machine the newer model that would be the 8400 has a removable cord all right we still have the uh that would be the antenna spinning connectors in place that's fine this is the coaxial i don't use these I actually use these I use adapters when I record when I record I input composite video in here and when I output video I use this guy I have to use adapters that convert this connection which is the UHF connector to the RCA type which is pretty much this right here this is the audio out okay 
So, I mean, it looks... Okay, let me look at something underneath the machine before I stop this video. I don't want to make this video too long. I just kind of want to make an in initial inspection for this machine. Let me go ahead and see if we have the... That would be the tuner. That's a, a, a part that's placed underneath the machine. Yes, we do have it right there. If you open that window right there, you have an actual, it can either be a channel three or a channel four RF converter. I'm not sure what channel it's set for because I have not opened this yet. So yes, this machine, it is quite dirty, quite dingy, quite dusty, which I do plan to clean very well. Not the front, uh, yeah, it seems to have a lot of sticky residue on it. Uh, that was probably placed after so many years. Probably from the cover itself. Because the cover itself, I believe it is vinyl. And vinyl it tends to become uh, sort of sticky over the years. Let me kind of place this down. Alright, so this is going to be a very fun project for me. And this was not planned at all. I, I did not have to look for this machine. This was actually, I received an email from a seller in the East Coast. And actually they told me, how much are you willing to pay? And I gave it, I mean, at least what I think is a very honest price. That would be $1,500. That would be for the machine itself. That would be for the, the timer, like I said, the manual along with a total of 18 videotapes, which is wonderful. Now, actually, I do plan to re-spool these guys. I mean, I don't really like the, the, the tape that's in here because it's, it is actually a cobalt formulation, which is not the best. I mean, cobalt was not the best. I mean, uh, the best, this, this cover is kind of broken. I mean, which is fine. I mean, even in this condition, it's wonderful to have such a thing because it's so incredibly rare. Now, I do plan to respool these guys with the higher quality that would be the VHS tape because VHS tape, it's very resilient. It's a very good formulation. Now, it's not the best, but it's, it's quite good. Uh, I do, I still use VHS tapes in the here and now and they just keep going and going. It's a wonderful formulation. I mean, compared to this, this is a cobalt based formulation and I do plan to respool these probably in another video. I, I do plan to show you how I, I, I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, let me kind of, let me kind of bring those because I have a, uh, I actually purchased some black.